And good morning, everyone. I'm Gary Demas and from the president of Dave Fox Design Builder Modelers right here in Columbus, Ohio, and Jamie Broslavsky is with me. So, Jamie, we have got an uh, interesting subject today that's going to help a lot of homeowners, right? Yes, myself included. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we just found out. I found out I'm going to have to make you a public example on no. something you have not addressed yet on your home. <laughs> so that way all of our listeners can write in and say how you should have been paying attention to that and you weren't. It's shameful. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm okay, so you're listening to the Dave, Dave Fox. i got to say that right. Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show. And we're really glad to have everyone tuned in this morning. We are going to be talking about home maintenance tips, things to do, things to watch out for. And believe me, I've been in this industry, Jamie, for 30 plus years. I always say plus because I don't want to tell people how long I really have been in it because they'll think, oh my gosh, how old is that guy? (laughs) So, uh, but I've seen a lot of things over the years, you know, I've really been in the remodeling industry nearly all of my life and uh, have torn into many, many homes. And obviously we, being in remodeling, you know, you are taking apart houses, you're opening up the structure. And sometimes we're doing that because there was an issue, you know, there's deterioration or rotting in the walls or something. Other times it's just doing it because we're adding an addition or moving a wall or whatever, or taking out maybe a partial exterior wall, you know, to open up into a new family room. So we get a chance to see everything that's been in that house for however many years that house has been standing. So it's really interesting some of the things that we see and observe. And, you know, after all these years, I've just come to realize that there's always something new that I haven't seen yet. And you, know, <laughs> you, you got <clears throat> all the different builders and remodelers that have worked on a house over the years. And uh, who knows all the things that could have happened unless you're a remodeler and you're opening it up and exposing it. It's kind of like you're opening time capsules of what happened many years ago and seeing the result of that. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, when a surgeon is performing surgery and they say sometimes they need to open up and really look at it. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like that. They're just really looking at all the pipes and checking everything yeah. out and yeah, get no, no imagery, no MRI can see what they can see uh, by opening you up, huh? Yeah, so we really are expert surgeons on the home. We just don't make a comparable <laughs> wage as a typical surgeon, but you know, we still Not have, yet. We have fun yes. just the same. <laughs> Actually, not yet, not ever. Jenny. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, in case you've missed any of our previous shows, I just want everybody to know they can go to DaveFoxRadio.com. That's a really easy website to remember. You can go there and you can see a list of all of our previously broadcast shows. Some of them are videotaped, like today's, this morning's show. Yep. And you can see Jamie, not live and in person, but videoed in person, right? Yep. Yep. And it's because the thumbnails of all of our shows have a picture of Jamie on it. And the reason that is, is because artificial intelligence picks the best looking person and they put that (laughs) on the video. So you'll never see my my picture on there. No, I'm not. I'm still not buying that, Gary. Oh, that's the truth. (laughs) So, and I'm fine with it too. Uh, So again, DaveFoxRadio.com. You can go there. And... Jamie, tell our listeners about our website a little bit. Yeah, so our website's actually a really great place for information about remodeling, just in general. Of course, about our company, you can walk through our process and really get to know our company and our culture and uh, a lot about us, but also just in general about remodeling, which is really great. We have um, construction time phases on there that you can see, our personal process, the phasing of it and time frame of it all you can see on there as well as some budget ranges. Um, Not only our own budget ranges and expectations that we can kind of gauge, but also a link to cost versus value, which we've mentioned on here before. Um, It's a great report that pulls averages from permits. Um, So it's Mm -hmm. really accurate information that can be really helpful to consumers, um, even to square footage cost on additions, things like that. Um, so really just great resources are, we have a resource center on our website under the getting started tab. 
Um, if you go on there under the Resource Center, there's a bunch of blog posts about different things, questions to ask before a remodel, um, you know, what to look for, what to think about in addition, different projects we've done and things we've learned along the way. So it's really just a really great resource. Mm -hmm. um, we call our blog post the Resource Center for that reason, because yeah. it's meant to just be educational and helpful, just like our radio show. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so you're welcome to go to DaveFoxRemodeling. Or no, DaveFox.com. This is a Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show. i got to get all that terminology right. Or DaveFoxRadio.com. And uh, we get a lot of visits there. A lot of people, I think, find a lot of helpful information. Okay, Jamie, so let's get into the meat of our topic today. And that is uh, just really caring for your home. And obviously in Ohio, we go through four seasons. And seasonal changes in moisture, temperature, wind, all of that kind of stuff kind of beats the heck out of our houses. <laughs> okay, it's, it's a real challenge. Yeah. Handling extreme temperature changes. I mean, we could have 17 degrees below zero, which we didn't have this winter, fortunately. Right. And we could go up to over 100 degrees, and that's a huge temperature range. And a lot of products respond to temperature and humidity by getting bigger and getting smaller, okay, expansion and contraction. And that can just cause all kinds of issues. So in our industry, we have a lot of methods that we counteract that. And part of it is, you know, making our homes, <clears throat> um, giving them vapor barriers to help with the moisture change issues. Uh, of course, we have HVAC to deal with interior temperature changes, but on the outside, your, subject, your house is subject to whatever temperature is out there. So exterior materials have to be extremely durable, flexible. Uh, caulking needs to be flexible. Uh, but even with the best of materials, over time, there can be issues that arise that homeowners need to be aware of. So today, you know, there's a lot. If you go online and say homeowner tips for blah, blah, blah. You know, home maintenance tips. <clears throat> Ninety percent of what you read is like, well, duh, of course. You know, you check your furnace filter, you check, blah blah blah. You know, and you go through this list, and it's like, all right, that's true. Well, today we're going to bypass the simple, easy stuff, and we're going to get into the complex issues, the things that can be hidden that a lot of people don't see or realize, and we're going to talk about the damage that can arise from those. Because having been in this business, Jamie, we've done some huge remodel projects in terms of expense that simply were because <clears throat> exterior siding was allowing water to get in the wall. And I can think of a number of these cases. One in particular was a two-story home and water was infiltrating around windows and it was a stucco home. And literally the water over a period of years started disintegrating all the wood joists in that wall, upper and lower. Oy. And we did an extensive repair on that home. Had to pull all the stucco off, the exterior sheathing, had to go in and replace studs one by one and plates. And it was very uh, time consuming, labor intensive, very difficult project, <clears throat> all because of some exterior issues. And we're gonna talk about those today in the next, next segment. So we're not gonna let it out yet. Okay. People have to wait till the next oh, segment. That sounds awful. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So. Uh, that's the kind of stuff we're going to tackle today. Does that sound interesting? Yeah, it does. You know, that part, that sort of uh, expense and remodel is hard, too, because you don't even get the pretty before and after. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you live through all the maintenance and repair. Yeah, I mean, but you don't get that wow fun. factor at the but end. But you get the good feeling after it's done, knowing that it's done right and it's going to last now. Yes. You know? So any repair you do, it's like, oh, I hate doing this. I hate paying for it. But... Once it's done, you have the peace of mind that, okay, now we've taken care of this. and Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, and Jamie, is along the way, you know, if you can think of any questions from a homeowner point of view as we're discussing these topics, I want you to just speak up and raise your hand and I'll call on you. And you okay. Can, okay. <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right. So thanks for tuning in to the Day Fox Home Remodeling Show. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Day Fox Home Remodeling Show. I'm Gary Demas, and we're really glad to have everybody listening in today because we're going to give you some really important tips on things that you need to look at on your home, especially as we're going into spring now. 
And Jamie, in the previous segment, we were talking about temperature changes and, and humidity changes and how that can really wreak havoc with a lot of building materials. So the exterior of the home really can be a challenge. And I can't think of many exteriors that you can just do on a house and then forget it for 20 years. You know, hmm. I can't think of many. Almost any kind of an exterior is going to need some maintenance. Some maintenance, yeah. Some uh, addressing some issues. Because what happens is if you wait the 20 years and don't do anything, your walls could be disintegrating inside from moisture damage over time. Yeah, and yep. you might not even know. You, in most cases, that's, that's exactly what happens. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about, since we're talking about that, let's hit that first. Okay. So before the break, I was talking about this project where it was a two-story home, and literally it was a stucco exterior, mm -hmm. and the walls inside that two-story, you know, the one big wall in the home, many of the studs had totally disintegrated. And it was basically side, er, the stucco itself and drywall inside that, that was holding that house together. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so this is something that house had probably been bought and sold, you know, two or three times with yeah. this issue going on, and no one really spotted it. Wow. So, and you have a stucco home, right? I do. Yeah. So I'm sure you and uh, Oscar are out there every year examining all the caulking and just looking it all over, make sure it's not going to happen to you. Um, <laughs> nope, I got that question wrong. I should. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about this because any of our listeners, if you have a stucco home, the thing to think about is stucco is an excellent product and it will last a really long time and does a great job of keeping water out and Good. keeping. So I'm okay then. Keeping weather <laughs> out of your house. Okay. But the drawback is any weather that gets behind the stucco, any moisture that gets behind the stucco, it also does a great job of keeping that moisture in the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's like the other side of the coin. Okay. So it's perfect for shedding water and snow and wind-driven whatever, sleet. But around windows and corners of homes is where you can have a problem. And this house I'm talking about in particular, uh, years ago, someone had put in some new windows. And the window sills, which should be shedding water away from the window, right? So mm -hmm. if, if the water's raining and maybe the wind is blowing against the wall, so you got all this water running down the wall, it's running down the stucco, the stucco's doing its job, and then it hits the window trim. So there's a number of areas where that water can get in. So along the top of your window, there is a drip cap. And this is a piece of metal flashing that's supposed to go up behind the stucco and it comes out over the window trim and then it turns down a little bit. So that any water coming down and hitting the top trim of your window is not allowed to penetrate behind the stucco because this metal flashing is there to route it out over the top of the exterior trim. <clears throat> um, I, almost every home you'll find that drip cap. Occasionally, you'll find that there's no drip cap there. And that could be a real issue. And then you're only depending on caulking to hold that weather out. So that's something that would really need to be watched on a yearly basis because caulking doesn't last forever. You know, you can buy the 20 year uh, caulking and put it on there. And then in two years, it's probably pulling back somewhere. And, uh, and after 20 years, if your wall's disintegrated, you take that caulk tube back and say, hey, this is a 20-year warranty, so they'll give you a brand new caulk tube, right? <laughs> but you're left with a $30,000 repair on your home. Oh, no. So you don't depend on the caulking on a very long-term basis. You buy the best caulking you can. Okay. So the very top of the window trim is a critical spot. Then you've got the sides of your window trim, and most of the time on a stucco home, you'll have either uh, a true cedar, real cedar wood trim, or you may have uh, a metal trim if your window has a clad exterior, mm -hmm. or it could be a synthetic product like Apex or um, a hardy plank. <clears throat> okay. So you've got that trim going around your window and the, and the stucco's setting up against it. 
And what happens if it's, especially if it's a real cedar wood, as I mentioned, expansion and contraction and all the temperature changes and moisture changes. So that cedar trim on the outside of your house through seasons, it's getting bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller every year, mm -hmm. back and forth, back and forth. So caulking, that's the enemy of caulking, all that movement. So in the winter time when things are dry, it's shrinking. In the mm -hmm. summer times when they're wet and humid, it's expanding. So along the sides of, the, of your window trim where the stucco meets it, you wanna make sure that caulking is in good shape. That's probably the, the least area of problem. So okay. the top of the window is a big issue and then the window sill is a big issue. And is it better to look for those kind of issues when it's cold and small or when it's warm and expanded? You know, I think anytime you can tell, because what will happen is the caulk will actually begin to split and, and pull apart and it'll be obvious that there's an issue there. Okay. So here we are getting into better, better weather now. It's a great time to go out and look around your home. Okay. So everybody out there listening that has a stucco home, I want you to go out this, you know, next weekend or whenever. Okay. When you got plenty of daylight. Look at the caulking and, and all the, the trim around your homes and make sure that it's looking good. Uh, especially look at the top and make sure you've got that metal drip cap. Uh, and then the window sill, which was the big issue with this project I'm telling you about that caused so much damage, was when the people put the new windows in years ago, instead of the sill running downward towards the exterior it was actually inverted and running slightly towards the window oh no did they put it in backwards or no it was just a poor installation poorly done so <laughs> what they were doing was creating basically a little pond to hold water and just sit there and seep into the house mm -hmm. so that's on every window on this whole side of the home oh my so over time that water is seeping in and it's getting inside, and then the stucco's doing a great job of not letting that water get out, right? <laughs> it's doing a super job. But uh, what's happening is as that wood gets wet, it begins a dry rot, rot system where it can't dry out. So it remains wet and damp uh, time after time, season after season, and begins to just eat away at that wood. And then on that particular job, I mean, when we pulled the stucco off, Stucco is really strong, and it's uh, put together. There's wire lath in it and all, all kinds of stuff. So it's a really strong, durable material. It comes off in big chunks. And then we see the sheathing all deteriorated and the, all the studs, wall studs, just many of them completely eaten away. And wow. we're actually providing no support at all. So literally, it was drywall and stucco that was holding that house up. Oh, my. So what was it that led to discovering this? Uh, the I think the homeowner just over time noticed that there was issues. I can't remember specifically what it was on this job. Yeah. I'm not aware of it. But obviously, if that much deterioration goes on, something's going to make you aware. Maybe yeah. the baseboard starts pushing in too much or uh, maybe on the outside, you just observe some things. But somehow they got a clue that there was an issue. So we went in, did some exploratory, you know, investigating there and discovered really what was happening. So um, here you've got a real big no-no, you know, that exterior sill actually having water pool up against the window and against the house. Yeah, kind of doing the opposite of its job. <laughs> the opposite of its job. And again, caulking is not going to keep that out forever. Mm -hmm. Caulking failed, the water got in year after year, and you ended up with a huge mess and a huge expense for these folks. And it's really, like you said, it's a shame to have to spend a lot of money on a repair like that. And it really could have been caught earlier, just observing, you know, how that was all situated. So, Jamie, we're going to continue this discussion right after the break. And welcome back to the Dave Fox Home Remodeling Show. Today we are talking about terrible, terrible things, aren't we, Jamie? <laughs> well, preventatively terrible. <laughs> preventatively, yeah. Well, we just have to make a neat headliner so people will listen. Oh, okay, yes. We're awful, gonna talk about the most things. terrible things you could ever experience <laughs> on your home and how not to have those happen to our listeners' homes. That's right, yeah, okay. that's the key. How to avoid them. Right, so if you missed the first segment, wow, you missed a doozy. You're gonna have to go to dayfoxradio.com and listen to it on there. Yeah. But uh, we were talking about this particular project that we did, it was probably three or four years ago we did this one, where 
two-story home, a whole wall virtually had to be real bit rebuilt. <clears throat> and the problem was uh, stucco and the sills were turned towards the house instead of away from it. Water pooled up there, got into the walls, just began de deteriorating them year after year after year. So uh, that was what happened on this particular project. But uh, while we're on the topic of stucco and particularly cedar exterior trim, as I mentioned, a lot of times cedar is used around the window itself, but also on corners, because you usually have some kind of a vertical corner board with stucco, and then you, the carpenters and masons will put the corner board up there, and then they'll run the stucco right up and, and abut it right up next to that board. So if that's cedar in particular, we know that cedar or any wood expands and contracts primarily with moisture. Not so much with temperature, but mostly humidity and moisture is what makes it swell and shrink. So if you have like nice four inch or six inch corner, cedar corners, then you've got a nice wide board there that is every year going to be shrinking and, and expanding every single year, back and forth, back and forth, which is working away at the caulking joint. So where the stucco meets that cedar corner trim, there's a, a bead of caulk there. So over time, <clears throat> that caulk is just going to, it can't win the battle over a lot of years. It's going to be coming and going, coming and going. So you'll have to, when you look at that caulk and realize that, oh my gosh, it's cracked all the way down here. Well, what's, what you're doing is you're allowing water to get back in a joint. And that water, once it gets in there, let's say you have heavy rains and the wind's blowing and just drives water in there. Well, as I mentioned, stucco does a great job of keeping water out and of keeping water in. So if water gets in there, it's going to be in there for a while and it's going to work away at the corner framing of your home. So just go outside, look at your corners, look at your windows, observe the caulking. Uh, and is the caulking, the seams, really what you're looking for? Yeah. Is there any kind of other alarming things no, that you that's, might really that's just that caulking? That's primarily where the problem is. And just making sure it's not separating and there's mm -hmm. no seam in it. Yep. Anywhere like that. Yep. And it's very easy to determine, you know, if, if there's a potential problem there. And you can just imagine if I held a hose up against this, would water get inside? Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, uh, now, what if, if it is cracked and separated, do you just want to re over it or do you need to have some no, sort of No, you want to get all the loose stuff out. So you take okay. a putty knife, maybe a five-in-one tool, and you'll get all of that loose caulking out. And I would, I would work kind of hard at that. Because uh, if you can get it all out, the better it okay. is. Uh, then you're not depending on the old caulk to be adhering you know, and going over old caulking. So it's yeah. best to get out everything that you can. You probably can't get it all out. Some of it's sticking really good, and that's fine. Okay. So you get that out. You buy a really good exterior uh, weather-resistant caulking. Mm -hmm. And you can buy them in colors if you're matching a particular color so you don't have to paint anything that you caulk. Okay. <clears throat> and then you'll... Get out there and apply that caulking, uh, make sure that it's filling that corner really good and, and kind of squishing in between the stucco and the wood. And then, you know, that should last you a couple years at least, if not more. Okay. And it's something you just want to continually keep an eye on. Yeah. Are there, I mean, companies that you can call to do that sort of thing? Or is that just typically something a homeowner Yeah, does there's like uh, typically handyman services. We'll do um, that sort of thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. For those of us scared of heights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I know what I'm doing this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next, Gary? What else are you going to scare me out of? <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Dryer vents is another thing that probably doesn't get much, you know, attention unless your clothes, just the dryer runs longer and longer and longer. And you're thinking, why on earth is the dryer running so long now? Yeah. Well, it's probably because your vent's all clogged and it can't get a free flow of air through the dryer. So you're just kind of stuck with that humid air trying to get out of the dryer. It's blowing into the vent trying to get out, but it's all full of old lint and it can't get out. So yeah. the dryer runs and runs and runs. And there's so many different scenarios where that can happen. Now, in my house in particular, the dryer vent of a two-story house and a big attic space above, the dryer's up on the second floor. So the vent goes up the wall. And this is the way it was built 30 years ago. It goes up the wall and then up 
the attic to a uh, vent, a, a roof vent, and it blows out through the roof. Well, that's weird. That's not great. Yeah, because no, you're blowing <laughs> lint way. and everything upward. Okay? Yeah. So that thing, when, when we bought the house, took a look at that thing. It was full of lint from the very top all the way down. Oh, I bet. Oh, my gosh. So I got up there in the attic and just emptied that whole thing out. And it was the corrugated, flexible uh, dryer vent, which yeah. even catches lint more than the smooth metal. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I replaced that with metal all the way up and straightened it all out. And that's something I've got to keep my eye on because sooner or later that's going to fill up again. Yeah. Ours on our house, it's kind of weird. Our washer and dryer is kind of right at the front of the house, but for some reason they run the vent like 14 feet and then put a 90 degree angle in (laughs) out the front. And I'm not sure why they did that, but it gets clogged up too so we always um we actually bought this thing on amazon that you can attach to the end of a drill Mm -hmm. like a drill bit and you stick it in and it spins in there and brings everything out okay and it does a really good job that's great it really gets it (laughs) but we do that um i know for me i'm terrified of house fires oh and that's why okay that one's that one is a maintenance tip i i do frequently because it scares me (laughs) okay (laughs) all right so yes it's worthwhile just to check your ducting yeah and clean it over so ever so often okay so what else you got jamie all right well what about sealing your grout in your house okay that's that's a really um multifaceted topic okay (laughs) grout and sealing and there's so many different ideas about that so we're going to spend the next seven segments on this all right (laughs) now Um, So let's just talk about grout. Um, So typically on a floor or a shower wall or maybe a kitchen backsplash, you'll have your tile and a grout joint. The grout joint could be anywhere from a sixteenth to a quarter of an inch thick. Mm -hmm. And you've got plain grout or sanded grout. So if you have joints that are less than an eighth inch, you would use unsanded grout because it can squeeze in those very small joints and fill them fine. If you have wider joints, you'll use a sanded grout. So the grout can remain strong in a larger joint okay. when, it's, when it's sanded. Uh, grout, there, you know, over, in past years, <clears throat> there was kind of a, just your typical, you know, masonry grout product. And it is porous and it will absorb moisture. Not a lot and not readily, but it will absorb moisture. So that's a grout product that was the one with the highest amount of maintenance because the the Portland cement in that grout, you know, it was just subject to failure over time or yeah. staining or getting dirty. And it's not the easiest thing to clean. And I'm sure there's many, many housewives out there or people that have clean homes or men that have scrubbed their showers because their wife said, this is disgusting and I'm not going to do it, (laughs) Uh, would attest to that. So there's a lot of different types of grout, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, We've got a break coming up here, but after this break, let's talk about the different types and what to do with them. Okay. Okay, we're back, Jamie, and we're talking about things to look out for in your home. And uh, these are things that really any homeowner would want to kind of take a look at. And we're talking about the more major items that can cause really potential damage to your home. Mm -hmm. Uh, We talked about exterior siding and and stucco and making sure the the flashing and the caulking is in good shape and the damage that can cause. Uh, So we just started talking about grout, just in case case you're just tuning in. So grouts uh, in tile, flooring or walls, uh, you've got this, the older style grout was porous and would absorb moisture. And uh, there's been sealers available for many years. And sealers, just like anything, get better over time. Uh, so there's some really good sealing products out there now. And uh, they're typically pretty smelly. Mm-hmm. And you want to do them on a day when you can open the windows. But you'll just, you're basically going to kind of soak the sealer or all the tile grout 
and you can get sealer on the tile. It's not a problem. So on a floor, it's the easiest. You'll just get that floor nice and wet with the sealer, let it soak into that grout, and then you're going to want to wipe it down really well, you know, after a few minutes. And you'll want to have several dry cloths that can absorb all the sealer off the face of the tile because mm -hmm. you don't want to leave sealer on your tile. So it's a smelly process on floors in particular. It's not real tough in that, you know, you just pour the sealer on, it's soaking right down into the grout. On walls, you do the same thing, apply the sealer on the walls and let it soak into the grout. And then again, wipe it down really good with several different dry uh, cloths. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna absorb somewhat into that grout. The grout's mm -hmm. gonna suck that sealer in and it'll give you a good, pretty water resistant barrier for you know at least a year. <clears throat> uh, some, you know, the better the, the product, the more time it'll give you. So that's gonna help with staining, it's gonna help with shedding water. But one of the things when you think about sealer and tile grout, a lot of people think, well, I have to have the sealer to keep it waterproof. But the reality is sealer is not going to make it totally waterproof. You're always going to get some water down through that grout. And that's another case where, as I mentioned, we work on homes that are many, many years old. Mm -hmm. And I personally, back when I was working in the field, I remember <clears throat> taking old shower, you know, tile shower walls out and the tile looked terrific. It was done really well 30 years ago. Yeah. And still looked good. The grout was in decent shape. It had been cared for. So as I ripped all that tile off down to the bare studs, I saw staining. It's like I was just amazed to know that water could penetrate all of that and stain wow. the studs yeah. inside. So it just proved to me that you're not going to have a completely uh, waterproof wall unless you use some of the new products we have today like the Schluter uh, Curdy walls um, which is really the way that we do showers now it really is a completely waterproof membrane uh, on all the walls and the floor system before the tile goes on oh wow but the idea that the sealer is going to keep all the water out is not completely true it'll keep a lot out mm -hmm. and it'll help the cleaning um, and those kind of things but you're not depending on that for a completely waterproof project and nowadays you're depending on the treatment behind the tile to be right. waterproof so but what if you have an older shower that doesn't have <laughs> yeah. schluter behind it well is... even older showers typically like like in a, if it's a tile base shower uh -huh. base then it's going to have like a lead pan or a rubber membrane pan something again to catch the water and still even in the older methods they knew the grout didn't keep water yeah. out so they had a way to deal with that although the walls they usually didn't do much so but the walls got some moisture not a lot really not a lot, enough to cause a lot of damage. So do those uh, kind of newer wall cladding systems like Cambria, now they're quartz, they can mm -hmm. put up on the walls of your shower and it's really just the seams at the bottom and corners, right? Yeah. So are those, does less water would get through on those, yeah. I would imagine, right? No doubt, yeah, it's, it's a whole sheet product covering yeah. the whole wall in the shower. So you've got the corner joints. We would still want to have waterproofing behind that system. Uh, but yeah, those are going to be, and the, those are new, right? <clears throat> That's right. kind of brand new and probably yeah. a lot of, <clears throat> probably a lot of people haven't even seen those yet. I know we just got, uh, one of the Cambria samples up in our showroom mm -hmm. and it's not only stunning, but all I can think of is, gosh, how easy to clean. <laughs> yeah. Easy <laughs> to clean. It is so smooth and. Yeah. People that uh, love to clean caulk would not like it. No. Say that again. <laughs> people that love to clean caulking. Would not like oh it. yeah no it's so e it looks so easy <laughs> okay <laughs> envious yeah so you could come in our design studio and actually see that product and yeah it's going to become very popular yeah i mean it's worth seeing it's stunning mm -hmm. yeah but but cool. uh tile is beautiful there's so many things you can do with it and yeah our designers can just put together amazing designs so it's still a great product put the right surface behind it and the sealer i, I guess the bottom line with sealer is it's not probably as critical as everyone thinks it may be. Okay. Um, and actually, if you put no sealer on tile, and the grouts today are better. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there's modified grouts. There's uh, actually pre-mixed grouts that have additives already built into them. So it makes them more durable, makes them more resistant to staining. So the higher quality grouts today 
are already really good. And some of them really don't even require any ceiling. But an older home, <clears throat> ceiling is a good idea. Uh, if you forget it a year or two, it's not going to kill anything or, or really hurt anything. But it's just a good idea to give you that extra moisture protection. All right. Okay. Very good. Well, what else you got for well, us? Well, <clears throat> uh, let's talk about chimneys because we're talking about issues that can get out of hand and cause a lot of damage without people really being aware. So chimneys are another area that can cause an issue, and that is gonna be water seepage that you can get. And I'm gonna talk about the three different areas that that can happen on a chimney. <clears throat> now, a lot of older homes, if you have a true masonry fireplace, and that's primarily what I'm talking about now with the chimneys is a true masonry fireplace with brick or stone exterior. Mm -hmm. So you've got the cement block that's going up and that's your chimney going up through the roof, up to the house, and then that's usually covered in a veneer of brick or stone. Well, you've got the top surface with flue pipes coming up. It could be one, two, or three, however many. And you've got to seal that the flue pipes at the top. So what years ago, what they used to do was use mortar that they used for brick, and they would just put a bunch of mortar, kind of make a mortar cap that was domed that would shed water off to the exterior surface of the brick or stone. Well, over time, that mortar will crack. Mm -hmm. And when that mortar cracks, when rain hits it, it would seep through the crack, and then what it would do is follow the inside of the chimney down, and it would find a way eventually to get out into your walls. So you could actually have the wall, let's say you have a fireplace in your family room, and you've got a nice mantle going up and on the exterior walls, that chimney. Well, if that cap is in poor shape and it's letting moisture get in there, then that moisture will come down and actually seep into the wall and could be doing damage inside that wall without you ever knowing about it until wow. 15 years later when you've got a lot of damage in there. <laughs> when you got a real problem. <laughs> yeah. So it's a good idea if you have that masonry, just that coated top, to have that looked at and make sure it's in decent shape. What people often do now is, um, if that's the situation, they'll either get a custom-made metal cap or they can get uh, like a sandstone top and, mm -hmm. and cut for the flue pipes to come up through. And that's something that lasts a lot longer. Yeah. The second issue could be, let's say it's brick and the mortar is really old. Let's say the house is 80 years old or yeah. 60 years old. And the mortar, many times, up there on the chimney, you're facing all the sun and all the weather from all directions. So that's eating away at building materials. And the mortar on a chimney usually deteriorates before anywhere else uh, on the home. So that mortar can get old and it can crack and moisture can get in through there and get into the inside of the chimney. So that's another thing, what we would do is tuck point those areas. So Jamie, we're running out of time. Uh, next week, we're gonna address some more of this. So All right. We'll be back.